Yeah, um, hi, um, we're about to start. Uh, Carrie, we turn it over to you. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, welcome, everyone. We would just like to take this time to welcome you, and thank you so much for joining our webinar on the Arms Trade Treaty. Um, at this time, I would like to welcome everyone um, and welcome our panelists today um, who are going to all welcome themselves and introduce themselves, I'm sorry. Um, so first, I would like to hand it over to Anna Polanco, who is going to start it off with our panelists. So, Anna. Hi, everybody. I'm Anna Polanco. I'm the Director of Organizing based out of New York, and I've been helping campaign on the Arms Trade Treaty. Hi, I'm uh, Adite Akwe, and I'm the Managing Director for Government Relations in Washington, D.C., and I have been uh, involved in the lobbying of the U.S. government on the Arms Trade Treaty. Hi, folks. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Akib Yacoub. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm a student activist with Amnesty International. Uh, I'm in the SAC up in Maine, and this summer I'm interning with our National Youth and Student Programs in New York City. And hello, everyone. My name is Carrie neff -Maley. I am a campaigner based out of Chicago. I'm originally from New Jersey, um, and I will be your webinar moderator today. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to take you guys through the agenda today. So first, um, we're going to answer the question, what exactly is the Arms Trade Treaty? And why is it important? Why should you care? Um, first, uh, Anna and Adite will briefly walk us through the story of the Arms Trade Treaty and where we are today. Um, then we're going to look at Amnesty's new arms trade treaty campaign, the goals, the layout, where you all fit into this. We'll train you on how to use this material to make a difference. Um, we'll tie this overall uh, overview of the campaign into our campaign launch on June 27th. And then we are going to look at beyond June 27th, um, how you can take this information and make change uh, beyond June 27, taking action and affecting change. So, overall, this is um, this is kind of uh, what we're going to be looking at tonight in our webinar. And overall, this is uh, an interactive presentation. And using GoToWebinar, we have a lot of great functions. Um, so, I want to explain a few of them before we go any further. Um, you guys have a control panel on your right, and a few of those functions, um, I just want to explain really quickly. One is a raise hand feature, so you'll see a little hand icon next to your name. Um, you can click that hand icon for a few reasons. One, either raise your hand if you're having any technical difficulties. It's kind of like raising your hand in class. You kind of want the teacher to pay attention to you. So me as a moderator or someone else, one of our panelists, um, will be able to pay attention to you and give you um, some help that you need if it's either technical issues or you just need you know, some help throughout the webinar. Also, it also could be to raise your hand if one of our panelists has asked a question or a poll that uh, asks you to raise your hand. Like let's say raise your hand if you knew the answer to that question or something like that. Um, number two for questions, at the end of the session, we're gonna have a 10 minute question and answer session. So um, to pose questions, there's a question tab um, in the control panel. So that's how that's the best way to pose questions to our panelists is to submit your question in that question tab. Um, if you are only dialing in by uh, through a phone and you're not accessing this webinar through the computer, you can submit your questions by email. Um, you can send them to me to Carrie. My email is uh, c nef C N E F F M A L E Y at A I U S A dot org. Um, you can send me your questions if you're not on the computer doing this webinar, and I can uh, make sure to get the questions to the panelists as well. Um, and three is the chat function. There's also a tab for chat, and that's to have more of a discussion about what's going on within the webinar with some of the other participants. So make sure you check out those three functions. During the presentation, that's kind of how the webinar is. Uh, the webinar works, um, and that's the overall agenda. So let's begin.
Awesome. So that's just a really short clip for us to get started. So what exactly is the Arms Trade Treaty? Well, the Arms Trade Treaty, which we often refer to as the ATT, not to be confused with AT&T, the phone company, um, is a treaty that will help regulate global trade of weapons. Right now, uh, there are regulations on the trade of weapons, um, but they're insufficient. Um, in fact, uh, it is more difficult globally to trade bananas around the world than it is to trade weapons, which is really surprising. Um, this means that weapons can and often do get in the wrong hands. So let's watch a short clip to learn about how these weapons actually get in the wrong hands. The United States even wants to leave out bullets. But if this treaty is going to work, there are enough bullets are made to kill every person on this planet twice. Every person on this planet twice. Eight million new guns are manufactured to fire them. And at least 1,500 people are killed in armed conflict and violence every single day. The arms trade is a deadly but booming business. Every year it is estimated that around 45 to $60 billion worth of arms sales are agreed. These weapons often end up in the hands of those who use them to kill, terrorize, or violently suppress their own citizens. In recent conflicts, over 80% of all casualties have been civilian. The arms trade is one of the most corrupt trades in the world, fueling countless atrocities, conflict, and poverty. A lot of the arms that Western governments have sold have gone into the hands of military dictatorships or corrupt governments. Back in 2008, the UK sold armoured crowd control vehicles and ammunition. Uh oh. Oh. Okay. It's like we're having a technical difficulty. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, very sorry about this. Sorry. <clears throat> to Libya. Okay. Tear gas Continue. grenades sorry. used by Egypt's security forces in November 2011 to gas their own citizens were supplied by the U.S. and some were even made in the U.K. There are treaties to regulate the global trade of many products even bananas and dinosaur bones, but not guns and bullets. The aim of an arms trade treaty is to have a globally agreed set of standards to regulate the trade in all conventional arms, stopping the sale of weapons to places that pose a serious risk to human rights. It all makes sense so far, so what's stopping this becoming law? Most countries support the idea of a treaty, but some want it watered down. China, India, and Pakistan want to leave out small arms, like machine guns and assault rifles. The United States even wants to leave out bullets. But if this treaty is going to work, it needs to include a wide range of weapons, equipment, and deals, and it must safeguard human rights. In the time it's taken you to watch this video, three people have been killed, and up to 30 people injured by conventional weapons. The world needs a bulletproof arms treaty. So now we're going to welcome um, Adite to take the floor and um, to you talk a little more in depth um, and give us some light and talk a little more in depth about the ATT um, and give us some more light information on the background of the treaty. Sure. Um, uh, Amnesty and uh, other organizations like Oxfam and uh, the Control Arms Coalition have been working on this treaty for over 10 years. And um, as the, the two videos, I think, have just shown, we, we're really trying to sort of try and get a bare minimum um, uh, of standard of accountability so that governments and other institutions that produce weapons and, and trade weapons or export weapons have to take into account the consequences of their deals with guns and small and small weapons and conventional weapons. The idea being that um, you know the uh, uh, the unregulated trade actually accounts for about 500,000 deaths every year. If we can get a treaty that is signed and endorsed by the global community of nations, we can begin to have oversight over this trade. We can begin to try to keep it out of the hands of people. Um, who are human rights abusers, 
and we can begin to sort of tr have an impact in sort of ending conflicts and, and, and ending gender-based violence and ending uh, ge preventing genocides. Um, all of this is what this arms trade treaty is really about. And after all of this time, it's going to be negotiated in New York, and we really are doing this global petition to basically demand leadership from our political leaders around the world. And that's what the arms trade treaty campaign is really aimed at. Great. And so thanks to the amazing work that our advocates like Adite and other advocates um, from Amnesty have been um, doing in terms of lobbying and advocating and talking to the U.S. government, um, you know, we've seen some change, which I'll talk about in a second. But the, the U.S. plays a really significant role in the upcoming arms trade treaty negotiations. And it's important that we make our voice heard um, to the U.S. government and make sure that President Obama and all the other um, leaders within the State Department um, and the relevant stakeholders um, understand how important this issue is to us. And so just to give you a little bit of background, the U.S. is actually um, the largest arms trading country in the world, racking up to 40% of the global arms sales, um, making its position on the arms trade treaty very, very influential. And um, the video that you just saw um, where it uh, mentions that the U.S. Um, is opposed to ammunition, that was a video that was created, I think, back in... February, and Ada can always correct me if I'm wrong, but um, yeah, that's right. the great news is that because of the advocacy and lobbying efforts, both Adite and other um, advocates from other sections of Amnesty have been doing, um, the U.S. Um, government's position on ammunition um, has changed, and they are no longer opposed to including um, ammunition um, in the upcoming uh, talks and negotiations that will take place in July. But we still need to push and encourage the U.S. government um, to put human rights at the heart of the arms trade treaty. After all, the whole point is that we're going to try to prevent as many human rights atrocities that are happening around the world. So um, Anna, Anna is uh, absolutely right that the, the critical period is going to be July uh, in about two weeks. And uh, this is where uh, the content of the treaty and the human rights parameters that Anna referred to, as well as the inclusion of ammunition, will really be decided. And for many of you, you may have seen other treaties being negotiated. Some of them, uh, like the climate change treaties, have not gone very well. Others have actually achieved what they've done, uh, or th what they were meant to do, and that's because there was consistent pressure on these delegations that are representing governments. So if the ATT is pulled together correctly, we, we, we believe that it will save tens of thousands of lives, and some of the worst human rights violations um, could be prevented. Uh, but we also know that many of the countries that are going to be sitting at the negotiating table put profits before human rights, and they will be pushing very hard for loose regulations so that the business of arms sales can continue um, as they have been for, for the last couple of decades. If the ATT leaves out human rights criteria, strong human rights criteria, in other words, you don't transfer, sell, export weapons to countries where there's a serious risk, uh, where there's a risk of serious human rights violations, then business will continue as usual and they and these weapons may be used to commit human rights violations. This is where Amnesty International and our co coalition partners and other NGOs come into the picture. We're calling for strong, robust and a bulletproof arms trade treaty that will ensure that global sales of weapons are regulated and that they will keep weapons out of the hands of human rights abusers. We have about two more weeks to make sure that we get this message heard as loud and as clearly as possible, and we are hoping that all of you are going to be part of that. Great. Thank you, Adite. So you have all of this information. Why should you care? 
You know, what's what's the big deal? Um, well, the res the irresponsible trade of small arms and light weapons is responsible for an array of human rights violations across the globe. Um, in this next part of this presentation, I'm going to share ten consequences, ten facts, ten killer facts um, that our world sees um, with an absence of an arms trade treaty. Number one, one person dies every minute as a result of armed violence. That's over 15,000 people each day, over 500,000 deaths every year. At least 60% of human rights violations documented by Amnesty International have, in, have involved small arms and light weapons. A light weapon is defined, or a small arm, is defined as any weapon that can be carried by at least two people. At least 55 armed groups and government forces use children as soldiers or extra troops, engaging them in war of adult making. There are actually, um, currently there are 19 countries where child soldiers are actively recruited and used around the world. Women and girls are repeatedly raped in conflict zones, many times with the use of weapons. It's already, this has already seen a reality in places from the, Demo the Democratic Republic of the Congo to Sierra Leone. Half a million people die every year as a result of armed violence. Millions more are injured, brutally repressed, raped, or forced to flee from their homes because of armed conflict, armed violence, and human rights violations using conventional arms. Damage caused by weapons destroy people's access to food, water, and shelter, pushing many into poverty. Children are especially vulnerable. In 2010, 43 million people worldwide were forced to leave their homes as a result of armed conflicts and persecution. This included 27.5 million people internally displaced within their own countries. There are over 875 million guns in the world. Seventy-four percent of the world's weapons are supplied by the five permanent members of the UN Security Council and Germany. This includes the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, Germany, China, and France. And finally, fact number 10, there are over 12 billion bullets produced each year. That's almost two for each person on this planet. You know, these are just 10 reasons, 10 killer facts that I would like to highlight and why I see it necessary to create a strong bulletproof arms trade treaty. Next I'll play the, a video of a young man Emmanuel, who's not much older than myself, um, and who faced firsthand the consequences of a world without an arms trade treaty. A collision around the world. There are 875 million arms in circulation around the world. 12 billion bullets are produced each year. No international standards exist to adequately regulate the use of this weapon. Which means some of these arms end up in the wrong hands. They are used to kill 1,500 innocent people every day. They are used to rape women in front of their families. They are used to forcefully recruit, abduct, and arm people like me. 
My name is Emmanuel Chow, a war child, an ex child soldier. There are still thousands of children fighting in 19 countries around the world. A global armed treaty will give children a chance to have a normal childhood. Please take action in our call for international armed trade treaty. Emmanuel Jal is a former child soldier from Sudan. You know, his story, paired with the 10 killer facts that I just highlight, really go to show why our world needs a robust arms trade treaty. You know, out of curiosity, um, using the raise your hand function on the Prezi, let's see how many of you folks are surprised, were surprised by those facts. Oh, wow. Wow, that's, that, that's a number of you, you know? That's, that's a lot of people. And, you know, now that we know these facts, now that we have this information, it's time to act. What are we going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? How can we change this? And that's where Amnesty International's new arms trade treaty campaign comes in. The ATT is a campaign that will work strategically to ensure a bulletproof arms trade treaty, one that entails human rights and keeps in mind people. AI has launched a global campaign to address this giant problem of arms trade. From South Korea to Australia to Cortia to here in the United States, people are taking action and are standing up for the human. Together, we stand united with one common purpose, pushing for a bulletproof, dynamic, powerful arms trade treaty. This July, as Adite mentioned earlier, our world leaders are coming to meet for a month-long conference to create the final arms trade treaty. We have one shot to act. The time is now. We have developed a campaign around this conference a one-time, strategically targeted, goal-oriented campaign to create, to create the arms trade treaty that our world desperately needs. At the end of this conference, at the end of July, a treaty will be adopted. Whether or not it does its job, well, that's up to us. That's up to the actions we take. Okay. So this is our game plan. This is our plan of action. All I'm going to say right now is that it, inv it involves bullets, bananas, guns, and of course, this guy here, Banana Rambo. So let's see. We have a problem, right? Uh, the arms trade treaty debate is imminent, and there's not much visibility in the topic, um, especially within the U.S. At this point, a solid, effective treaty is highly unlikely. We need a strong arms trade treaty. We need to educate and activate the public about the human rights atrocities connected to the irregular global trade, the rather the irresponsible global trade of arms and munitions. The solution? Well, it's this campaign, you and me and all of your friends on Facebook and in the social world. So let's refresh again. Campaign, you, me, click, boom, we're done. Sounds easy, right? But how do we put this into action? Uh, again, using the hands feature uh, on, on your webinar, by show of hands, if you thought that an arms trade treaty, one that will prevent atrocities, one that will end human rights violations, was just a mouse click away from being activated. Would you offer your support? Would you click your mouse? Let's see. Raise your hand if you would click your mouse, if a solution was just a click away. <laughs> wow, that's, that's a much quicker response. 
You know, that's a great response because that's exactly what we're basing this campaign on. If people thought that a strong arms trade treaty was only one mouse click away, then they would offer their support. But how do we get their attention? Bananas, of course. We hook them with a crazy banana fact. The fact that the global trade of bananas is more heavily regulated than the trade of guns. We educate them about the unregulated, the dangerous, damaging global trade of weapons. We use our 10 killer fact to shine light on the consequences of a world where there are no rules for the real weapons of mass destruction, like small arms and ammunition. Then, they click once to sign a petition supporting a strong ATT to be negotiated by the UN. Then you go, click, boom, solution, we're done. It all sounds simple. But exactly how do we get to click boom? This is where activists across the globe, including you, come in. That's right. And Akib has hit it on the, the, the nail on the head. I mean, it's this campaign, because it is a global campaign, is highly digital. It's a campaign that's really about personal activism. And it's about how many people can we reach um, and talk to about the arms trade treaty, which in some ways here in the US is a relatively obscure issue. And so how do we take something as complex as the negotiation of an arms trade treaty and really make it simple and accessible to everyday people who might know very little about um, the arms trade treaty or about the, the, the very critical issues surrounding it. So we've built a really sort of accessible, time-sensitive campaign, knowing that most of the negotiations will happen um, will happen at the beginning um, of July, and the, the heaviest part of the negotiations will happen at the end of July. So over the course of the last three days, we're going to see a lot, a lot of things negotiated. And so how do we raise um, our voice uh, to the key members um, including President Obama, and let them know that not only do we know that this arms trade treaty is happening and um, that it's important, but that we actually want to seat at the table. And we actually want to make sure that they understand that we know about this issue, we care about it, and we, we plan to stand up and really make our voices heard. So on June 27th, um, we're going to be launching um, a site uh, called clickboom.org. And um, just like Akib mentioned, it is really about clicking, um, picking, picking, um, signing the petition, picking images, um, photos, infographics that you can share with your friends, um, and really um, letting them know, um, you know, those critical killer facts and like why you care and why you signed this petition. And that is the most important thing that we could do right now at this point in time is really try to get a seat at the table and be able to say to them, we're going to have, um, you know, it would be great if we could say we're going to have one million signatures from around the world. And we're getting really close to that possibility. So how can we be part of it? So there are these um, really amazing photos that you see before you. Um, there's this, this sort of banana with bullets coming out of it. There's the, the gun, that AK-47 actually coming out of the banana, banana Rambo is my favorite, um, and, um, and there's actually many other photos that are not shown here, but that you'll be able to find on our website, um, amnestyusa.org slash arms. Um, there are a ton of infographics there, as well as on our Facebook page that you'll be able to share and help us reach our goals. Um, of getting as many people to see the campaign, um, to feel its its vibrancy and its um, viability. So, all of this in the U.S., um, all of this on the arms trade treaty in the U.S. will come to life on June 27th with AI's launch um, because you will be a part of it. Um, and this will be in perfect timing with the uh, Arms Trade Treaty Conference in, in July. Um, exactly. Um, you know, before, before we go and we talk about the launch, 
I would like to, you know, use information from ClickBoom that that Anna just shared with us, and really talking how can we blow this up. Our goal uh, with this campaign. Um, Anna mentions a million signatures from around the world. In the U.S., our goal is to collect 15,000 signatures. This campaign is designed to go viral, and we can do that with your help. Our job in the next month is to cover the online realm with the Arms Trade Treaty. Using the images and the graphics you found, you can find in clickboom.org, uh, change your Facebook cover, your Facebook profile photos, blog the images, blog the infographics. Um, let's create a buzz for the rest of this period. And of course, I'm connecting back to the June 27th launch, as Carrie mentioned earlier. So, so just to, um, this is Anna, so just to step in on the June 27th launch, um, basically what we're trying to do is trying to organize an action in Times Square that takes our crazy banana fact and brings it to life um, and really shares with the public, um, you know, why it is that the Arms Trade Treaty is so important. So on June 27th, um, we're going to be launching an event um, in New York City's Times Square that will sort of set the tone um, for this campaign and set, really send the clear message to the UN delegates who will be negotiating that we care about this arms trade treaty and it's and it's super important and we need them to um, we need to educate the public about you know what this campaign is about. So we've taken all the sort of interesting facts that you've seen throughout this uh, webinar and we've incorporated them into something called the Banana Festo. Uh, and that Banana Festo is sort of a little manifest booklet um, that talks about the critical issues um, related to the Arms Trade Treaty, the human rights atrocities, and this sort of obscure idea that bananas would be more difficult, um, are more heavily regulated than, um, than, than weapons. And so We'll be um, rallying and canvassing in Times Square on June 27th, the morning of June 27th. And then that day, um, uh, we'll be demonstrating, we'll be um, showing a 30 second video on three billboards in Times Square. So if you're in the New York area, we hope you'll come down in the morning and check out these billboards. But if not, the video will also play on our website, amnestyusa.org slash arms. And before the day is over, we will capture video of the entire day and what people thought when they heard about these facts on the street, and then share that video with you the next morning so that you're able to continue helping us campaign and spreading the word about why the Arms Trade Treaty is so important. Thanks, Anna. Um, again, uh, our, the June 27th launch is the launch of the campaign within the UI section of Amnesty International. This has been a campaign that has been going on for some time now around the world. Our, our online action, our us going viral, is powered by the action that is taken on the ground you know, by activists in the streets um, doing what activists do best. Uh, here are actually a few on um, examples of some activists. Uh, this one here draws to um, a street action, a flash mob in Bern, Switzerland, um, where you know, folks drop down on the ground, pretend to be um, shot dead, and they left their mark um, with you know, body marks using chalk. Uh, this is a youth action in Slovenia, um, where playing in the fact, the banana fact, uh, activists gave out bananas with the Arms Trade Treaty written on it. And finally, this here is um, a mock dying calling on the Russian government to open up their eyes um, to, to the arms trade and to the human rights violations that is caused by the responsible trade of weapons. Uh, and here is a young activist, a very, very young activist in Venezuela, um, signing on to what seems to be a, a giant petition um, that says no more arms for atrocities. These are a few examples of small actions, solidarity actions that you can host um, on the 27th and throughout the month to keep the buzz going. You know, um, take photos, upload them to our Amnesty um, Facebook page, uh, take videos, upload them to YouTube, and share them. 
Let's create the buzz. Let's make the arms trade treaty the talked about thing on Facebook, on so in our social world, um, for the next month. Because us doing this will make a difference, and us doing this will ensure a robust arms trade treaty. And before we get into the June 27th, um, the post June 27th action, I just want to. Um, First of all, thank um, for those people who are on the webinar, um, those people who participated in Tweet Week, uh, which was last week, where um, individuals, um, individual activists and supporters from all around the world were tweeting uh, towards the U.S., Russia, France, the U.K., and Germany um, all week, and that was a really powerful global action, and um, we even saw some governments responding by putting up FAQs, for example, on France's page, um, talking about what France's position was in the Arms Trade Treaty, so that was really powerful, and it just demonstrates the power um, of your online campaigning, both, you know, in Facebook, but also in the, in the Twitter sphere. Um, beyond June, uh, so just to reemphasize on June 27th, we really would love for everyone to take even a simple action, even if you can't um, gather with a group of friends, if you can, great, and do an action together, that would be awesome. But if you can't, um, you can do something as simple as simple as taking a banana and signing signing it, signing the outside of the banana and saying, I support the Arms Trade Treaty, and then taking a photo with it and posting it on Facebook. That's a really easy way to get involved, and um, you can do it right from home or, or right from work, um, and maybe others will follow and, and um, do the action as well. So the more visuals and pictures we have, which are super powerful, um, and our, our huge commodity on Facebook, the stronger that our campaign will be um, and the more signatures that we'll get um, in those 24 hours after June 27th. Um, after June 27th, um, as I mentioned, you're going to get a video um, on June 28th that will show you the day's activities and um, a little bit of, of a report back on what happened. And um, following that on uh, at the conference will begin um, on July 2nd, the actual like negotiations of the Arms Trade Treaty. And on July 3rd, we'll be submitting in partnership with Oxfam and Control Arms and a number of other NGOs, we'll be submitting all the signatures to Ban Ki-moon. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be able to take video of that as well um, and share it with you. So as you can see, you'll be able to follow the campaign um, as we capture new pieces of information. Um, and it's, it's super important that um, you know, we want to keep you involved. We want to, you to see yourself reflected in the work and the activism that you're doing and the organizing that you're doing, and then make sure that we share that um, with those people that have taken action with us and also with those people who maybe weren't convinced yet, right? So we'll be sharing all that information. And then throughout the month, there'll be opportunities to do what we call reactive campaigning, where you'll have a chance to take an action um, with us that we'll be sending um, via email or that you'll see on Facebook um, or that you'll see you know in some form online and so we're super excited to have you join us in that effort so this is Carrie I just wanted to take a few minutes to um, wrap up I have a few closing um, items and then we will transition to our question and answer session. Um, we have some questions that have come through so far, so thank you for those. And also, um, I want to give you an opportunity to send more questions through. You have the question tab in the control panel, so feel free to submit questions um, through the question tab. Um, we still have uh, some time for more, more questions to come through, so please feel free to optimize that. Um, after the webinar, we will follow up with all the participants um, with some helpful links. Some of you have, have expressed um, interest in receiving the links of the videos that we've, that we've shown um, on the Prezi, so we will be sending the links for where you can access the videos and also the links 
for where you can access all of the information on the arms trade treaty through Amnesty's website and some of the blog posts we've had, um, and also all of the information that we have from Amnesty's side. Um, once again, the general link that you can access all of our information from the website is amnestyusa.org slash arms. So um, from there, there are a bunch of links that you can access the infographics and the images. Um, you should be able to access the blog posts. Um, so that's kind of like the, the basic homepage for the arms trade treaty. Um, so check that out first. But we will follow up with all the participants who registered. And um, we'll also, we also did record the session. So we will follow up with the recorded version of the session so that you can use it um, in your activism in spreading the word. And also um, you can use it uh, to you know, pass along to anyone who you know that wasn't able to get on the webinar tonight. Um, so at this point, um, we have some questions that we would like to pose to some of our panelists. Um, some of them will be just kind of general questions. And then some of them um, I will pose to actual individual panelists. So the first question I'm going to pose to Adite. And the question is, what is the actual substance of the arms trade treaty and or what is the what is its current stage of development? OK, um, so this has been a very, very bizarre treaty process. Um, to the best of our knowledge, and we've been obviously meeting with um, members of the US government, but we also have people who have uh, amnesty uh, sections around the world who have been lobbying their own home governments. Um, what you usually have is a draft of a treaty um, which then goes through further revisions and then people sit down and start to negotiate this um, when the conference starts. This treaty doesn't have that actually. There is only a discussion paper which was pulled together by the, uh, the, the leader of the process who is a, an ambassador from Argentina and it's basically called uh, the chairman's text. Um, to the best of our knowledge, this is on, the only document that everybody seems to be sharing and that everybody seems to think is a starting point. But um, what we're hoping and, uh, is that this treaty will include you know, um, guidelines for you know, processes of accountability, for decision making, um, the inclusion of all of the different kinds of, of um, weapons and, and guns that are going to be covered. And, of course, it, that it would include uh, ammunition and, most important of all, uh, that it includes language that really says um, governments shall not um, trade, uh, sell, export weapons to countries where there is a, gr a risk of grave human rights violations. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Adite. Um, the next question uh, that has come through, I will pose to Akib. Um, and the question is: Out of everything you mentioned, um, out of everything you mentioned for Amnesty's ATT campaign, what is the most important thing I can do to help now? Well, to help now, um, I think you know, spreading the word online and the and to your friends and family is very, very key. Um, again, our goal is to receive. 15,000 signatures um, in the U.S. at least, uh, and we can do this, you know, of course, by first and foremost signing a petition online, sharing the link, amnestyusa.org uh, backslash arms is is key, and using changing your profile, your Facebook profile photo, your um, cover image, those are all key things to start creating a buzz around ATT. That's what you can do right now. Um, if you do have more time um, and would like to, you know, mobilize an action. That's another great thing you can do, and you can reach out to us um, to see how, you know, if you do need help, do you need help planning something, or you can create a small scale action on your own. And you know, once you share the photos and if you do have video from it with us, they'll be great. Thank you. And I would also like to pose the same question to Anna Polenko, if you have anything to add. What's the most important thing that people can do to help now with Amnesty's ATT campaign? Yeah, I think Akib hit uh, the nail on the head. And 
um, I think you can just bring your, you know, sign the petition, bring your creativity, as Akib mentioned, to the actions. And if you're not sure how to get started um, or you haven't seen it yet, we have a uh, activist toolkit on the website. So if you go to amnestyusa.org slash arms, you will see um, under the Get Involved section, uh, download tool, something, something called Download Toolkits and Resources for Activists. And when you go to that page, there's an activist guide. And if you just click on that, it'll walk you through, you know, all the key facts that you need to know um, related to the arms trade treaty and some just um, really um, just short shortcuts to getting to all the different sites, the Global Day of Action, um, and, and how you can support. Um, today we also launched um, on our blog, on the Amnesty blog, we also launched like four things you can do today. And today we're, we are sending out um, a request to um, our supporter base to help us um, raise money in order to actually like make sure we can get all the bananas and all the banana festos um, uh, to Times Square on June 27th. So that's another way that you can obviously contribute. Um, and for more information, you should go to our, our blog on, on the Amnesty USA page. Um, but for me, the most important thing is just um, spread the word. Help us share this information with as many people as possible so that we can get those signatures. Great. Thanks so much, Anna. Um, the next question I'm going to pose back to Adate. And the question is, um, would Amnesty's campaign on arms trade treaty and the arms trade treaty itself, if adopted in full, um, enrich the black market or rogue states? Um, I believe that, um, and, and Amnesty believes that this is an inc incredibly important first step to trying to limit and close up the space for rogue states and for, 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 for traders, arms traders, who are operating um, without oversight right now. Um, and the reason that they're able to do that is because they're varying levels of national legislation. Um, and so they can go to one country and avoid the laws there uh, and trade in another country and change the way they operate and how they do things and avoid the laws there. Um, and that's the, that, that's the big loophole. If we don't um, get a standard global, globally, um, that basically says, you know, um, this is not um, the right moment or the right place to trade or sell weapons to, or this is um, a government or um, you know a group that is uh, guilty of human rights violations. Then you know it's business as usual. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen or, or maybe remember a movie called The Lord of War, which was uh, a movie that starred Nicolas Cage, and it was based on the life of a Russian arms dealer called Victor Boot. Um, and you know, unfortunately, there are lots of people out there like that, and they are the ones who are enjoying this lack of regulation, this lack of oversight, and it's, it's, it's more than our responsibility to, to basically try to get our governments to tighten this up. Um, and, uh, and you know, the interesting thing is that uh, the manufacturers in the United States have not, ha have actually been quite supportive of this because they feel that um, the regulations, the lack of regulations facilitate the black market. I guess um, kind of kind of in addition to that previous question, what are what are the spice, what are the specific criteria in regards to human rights abuses clauses that Amnesty wants to add to the Arms Trade Treaty? Or well, not um, necessarily wants to add, but wants to make sure are included. Yeah, I first of all, I think it's incredibly important that the existing. Um, obligations, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which has standards that governments are supposed to meet in terms of not facilitating human rights abuses, not facilitating torture, not facilitating indiscriminate killing. All of those things need to be protected. And so they need to be in, you know, um, referenced and they need to be um, uh, uh, part of the, 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 the backing or the, the structure of the treaty itself. 
but the treaty is not meant to be the exhaustive dictionary. It's not going to be a very long document. But what it should have is that if there are, if there is a risk of serious human rights violations, um, then a country should not sell, should not trade, should not export. And um, at the moment, um, that's not the case. And you know, we have terrible situations going on. Um, all of us know what's going on in Syria. Um, and what's going on um, in other parts of the world, and you know, it's it's not as if the treaty is going to stop and fix everything, um, but right now there's nothing illegal about what's going on in terms of arms sales and trades to Syria. Um, and what we have there is a moral lack of accountability and leadership by the people who are supplying the Syrian government the weapons. A treaty like this will add some legal backing too that pressure to try and stop those kinds of flows. Great. Um, the next question um, is kind of a campaigning question and also um, kind of a policy question as well. So I'll put it out there and see who would like to answer it. Um, are there going to be particular issues such as gender-based violence um, or domestic gun violence um, that will be targeted and staggered throughout the time period of the campaign from June 27th until the end of the arms trade treaty conference to appeal to different people's interests? Or is it all one big monolithic campaign? And this is an activist who's trying to think of how to reach out to various friends and constituents to see um, how to connect with what they're interested in to get them on board with the campaign. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe I'll start and then Adte can jump in. Um, the answer, the short answer is yes. Um, there are, um, and there have been a number of reports um, that have come out that have focused in on different aspects of the, um, the arms trade treaty um, and some of the issues surrounding it. Um, obviously, there's sort of this large overarching umbrella surrounding the campaign that really talks about um, talks about the issue from a, from an economic perspective. So thinking about financial investment and where people's sort of public dollars are going in relation from from the government um, to the purchasing of weapons. But then there's also um, there's been a lot of information published about. Um, gender-based violence and the impact of gender-based violence um, in connection to the arms trade um, and in connection to just like the rampancy of weapons being distributed and I think throughout the campaign you're gonna see um, particularly heading after June 27th you're gonna see blog posts um, that have a gender-based lens you're gonna see um, different videos and different spokespersons um, not only on our site, but I think in the global campaign that will talk about the arms trade campaign from a variety of different angles. Um, so there's a sort of overarch and then there's this sort of more focused um, pieces and you can take any of the killer facts um, or any of the reports that we have, um, again, on the amnestyusa.org slash arms um, page and there is a section for reports related to the arms trade and you can grab um, all the information that you think will be super compelling to the audience that you're working with. Yeah, hi. Um, Anna is absolutely right. Um, the, um, you know, we, we're producing and sharing resources um, on a number of different things. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 the global trafficking of, of small arms and conventional weapons as you as the uh, question already pointed out not only impacts um, you know human rights violations it impacts conflict it impacts development it impacts health it impacts women children um, you know it is it is staggering um, when you think about it all of the different things that this this, this issue um, in, uh, impacts and, and, and contributes to. And so we are doing our best to try to sort of provide resources, not only on the conflict situations, but also on the human rights abuses, um, on the violence that is committed against women in conflict zones and out of conflict zones. And we, 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 we absolutely want you to reach out to different communities, 
to basically show them that there is an underlying link here and that if we don't address it, we're all going to continue to be addressing different bits and pieces of this and we're never going to actually get the problem solved in the comprehensive manner that it needs to. Um, this treaty is internationally focused. It is a treaty between nations and, and states. So it, it, it's, its purview and its focus um, is the trade between countries and, um, and so it does not apply to or impact um, the domestic gun issues in any country. Um, it's really about um, you know, trying to sort of start uh, to regulate things at the international level. Okay, um, we're just about out of time. Um, we have one more question that's come through, and then I think we will um, call it a day. Um, the final question is for Adate, and right now, which entity determines who is eligible, and I, I would say who, which country is eligible to buy wep weapons and which country doesn't? So right well, now, which entity determines? Yeah, there, there, there. At the moment, there isn't. Um, you know, the the only t the only kind of of entity that I that can decide a country or a region should not be able to purchase arms is the United Nations Security Council when it basically votes to impose an arms embargo, um, as we as we have um, imposed in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, um, and as we've had in in Sudan. Um, that is, is a problem because you need um, the Security Council to come to agreement and to vote and this is why we're having such a major, major frustrating time with the crisis in Syria where everyone understands that hu uh, uh, terrible human rights violations are going on um, and, and yet nothing can be done to stop the flow of weapons. Now the treaty is not going to create a new body or a new institution. That, that, that is not part of its ambit. But what it will do is it will force governments to, rep to do a better job of reporting, to account um, to, for where they send things, and then to be held up and say, you know, why did you trade or why did you sell to this country or to, you know, and, and what what what's the deal? You know, um, and we don't even have that basic minimum right now. So this is why this treaty is so critical, and why July is going to be an incredibly important month for development groups, human rights groups, women's rights groups, um, and and governments uh, in many of these developing areas. Well, thank you so much. We're we're out of time, but I'd like to thank all of our panelists for joining us tonight and for sharing their, their um, wonderful knowledge on the arms trade treaty and for also sharing with us all of the ways that we can get involved with Amnesty's campaign. Once again, the best place to get information about Amnesty's campaign is www.amnestyusa.org slash arms. Um, since you've registered for this webinar, you will be getting a follow-up email that will have a, a lot more information about getting involved um, from this point on, uh, and especially um, since the Arms Trade Treaty Conference is happening in July. So please uh, look for that email and, and stay involved with the campaign because we need you, as you've heard all of our panelists saying, um, we really need you to stay involved and to spread the word. Um, we've also recorded this session, so you will receive that file um, in the follow-up email that you can spread and you can use um, to educate others and to use in other situations that um, will bring more people into the campaign. And um, look for that email in the next few days and feel free to uh, reach out to us if you need anything and you have more questions about the campaign or you have questions for any of our panelists. So thank you so much for joining us tonight for our webinar and for joining Amnesty International. And um, we, we thank you for your time and hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much.